Welcome to part three of our four-part mini-series on hypothesis testing. In our last video, we talked about establishing a standard of evidence, which was all about our alpha level, determining what we would need to find in our study in order to be convinced that there's a real effect. I'll make one additional note that you'll never have to calculate an alpha level. It's not something computational. It's typically set by standards in your field, which in psychology and in most fields, your alpha will be 0.05. In this video, we're gonna go to our third step here in hypothesis testing, which is actually doing the statistics, collecting some data, calculating your test statistic, and so on. And I'm gonna go through actually some sample data today as we learn how to do this. So starting with a definition, a test statistic is a numerical summary of the degree to which a sample is unlike the samples predicted by the null hypothesis. So again, a jargony definition, unfortunately there are a lot of those, but let's break it down. The null hypothesis states that there's no effect. So in this case, what is unlike the samples predicted by the null hypothesis? Let's go back to the neuro IQ example. The null hypothesis states that neuro IQ is totally useless and it won't change your IQ scores at all. If that's the case and you do this study where you give people neuro IQ for 30 days and you measure their IQ scores, what are the samples that are predicted by the null hypothesis? Well, you would expect, if neuro IQ is useless, to find sample mean IQ scores of maybe 105, uh, 93, 100, 101, 99, things close to the population average IQ score of 100. So a test statistic says, okay, you got a result. How unlike these samples that are predicted by the null hypothesis is that result? Well, if you found an average IQ score of 150, that is very unlike the samples predicted by the null hypothesis. So your test statistic is sort of a measure of extremeness. It's a measure of your evidence, of how extreme your evidence is compared to the sort of assumption that there's no effect. So this is your first test statistic. This is your first inferential statistic that we're learning about here in this series of videos. This is for a one sample z-test. A z-test is a test statistic that we're gonna calculate that basically assesses whether an observed sample mean is significantly different from a population mean under the null hypothesis. So x bar here is your sample mean that you collected. So in our neuro IQ example, this would be our average IQ score of our 15 people who we gave neuro IQ to for 30 days. And the population mean assuming the null is true is basically gonna be 100. It's the average IQ score assuming that neuro IQ is totally useless. So it's just gonna be the normal average IQ in the population. And our denominator is something a little bit unique. It's standard error. It looks a lot like standard deviation, but we have this extra subscript which changes this then into standard error error, and standard error is the standard deviation of the distribution of means we would get from collecting many, many samples of data. Very wordy, kind of complex. We're not really worrying about sample distributions or anything like that, uh, sampling distributions, excuse me, in this series of videos. Lucky for us, though, standard error is actually very easy to calculate. You simply take your standard deviation, sigma, of the population, and you divide by the square root of your sample size, and that's going to be your standard error that you're going to plug into your denominator. So in reality, this is a very easy problem to solve. And to illustrate, let's go back to our neuro IQ example. I've been talking generally about this, but let's actually do a one sample Z test to see if this observed mean of 105.9 is significantly different from this population mean IQ score of 100. So here's our formula for the one sample Z test. And you'll see we actually already have everything we need for this formula listed here on this page. First of all, we have x bar, our sample mean, that's going to be 105.9, minus mu, our population mean, that's going to be 100. And then in the denominator, we're going to need sigma and our sample size. Well, here they are. There's sigma, it's equal to 15, and our sample size is also equal to 15. So let's start by getting that standard error done with. So again, this is going to be 15 over 15. We have our sigma, our standard deviation of the population, that goes in the numerator, and in the denominator goes the square root of our sample size, 15. So 15 over the square, uh, excuse me, square root of 15 comes out to 3.87, and this is our standard error. So this is what's gonna go in the denominator of the overall Z-test statistic formula. And look, we have everything we need, again, 
x bar is going to go up here, 105.9 minus mu, it's going to be over here, 100, divided by the standard error, 3.87. Now do not make the mistake of accidentally putting standard deviation in the denominator. If you do that, you're actually calculating what we call an effect size, something totally different that we're going to learn about soon. So just be sure, take your standard deviation, divide by the square root of n, that's what you put in the denominator of the test statistic. So let me show you the work for that. This is what we just talked about, 105.9 minus 100 divided by 3.87, and that's going to come out to 1.53, and that is your z-test statistic. And that's all there is to it. You collect your data, and you calculate whatever test statistic is appropriate for your study, which in this case is a z-test statistic. In our next video, we're going to talk about making the final decision, evaluating our hypotheses in light of the evidence we have over here on the right, in light of how extreme our test statistic says our observed values are.